Okay, our learning goal for section 4.4, composition of reflections, is that students will understand how to construct a composition of reflections. So remember, a composition is when we combine two or more different types of transformations together. And in this particular case, we're going to be looking at combining um, reflections together. So we're going to combine two or more reflections together and see what happens. Okay. So let's start. Um, when we combine two reflections, we create a composition of reflections. And when we do that, when we have two intersecting lines, the result is actually a rotation. So I want you to take a look at this diagram over here. We have line BD, which is coming down like this, and then we have line BC, which is coming down like this. So if my original figure is the green triangle, Imagine what's going to happen when I take that green triangle and I reflect it over line BD. We get the blue triangle, right? Then if I take that blue triangle here and I reflect it over line BC, then we're going to get the kind of pinkish triangle, right? So you can see if we look at segment AB and segment A prime B, this is actually a rotation of the original green triangle onto the pink triangle. We could rotate it and it would match up. So anytime we have two intersecting lines and we create two reflections over those two lines, if we would have done the, if we wanted to try to do it as just one transformation, we could do it with a rotation. And it turns out that that angle of rotation, this angle right in here, that angle of rotation is ac actually equal to twice the acute angle that's formed by the intersecting lines. So see this angle right here that's formed by the two intersecting lines? If we double that, we would get the angle of rotation. So for example, if we had this figure where we had these two intersecting lines and we reflected this blue flag over the first line to get the green flag. And then we reflected the green flag over the second line to get the red flag. What would be the angle of rotation that would map the blue figure onto the red figure? Well, I can see that the angle um, that is formed by the two intersecting lines is 40 degrees. So the angle of rotation would be twice that. And in this case, the angle of rotation would be 80 degrees. And that would, of course, be this whole big angle from here to here. Okay? All right, so let's look at another example. What if my lines don't intersect and instead are parallel? Well, a composition of two reflections in two parallel lines results in a translation. So again, if I take the blue figure here and I reflect it over this first line, I get the pink figure. If I take the pink figure and reflect it over the second line, which is parallel, I get the green figure. But can you see how if you were to take this blue figure here, I'm going to try to trace it a little bit here. If we were to take that blue figure here and do nothing more than just slide it, it maps exactly onto the green figure. And since we can just slide it, that's the same thing as a translation. All right, now here's where the demonstrations come into play. We want to look at how many reflections are needed to map one figure onto another. And in this particular case, I'm looking at this figure P. How many different translations, or excuse me, how many different reflections would we need to take this P and put it exactly on top of this P down here? So try to visualize that in your head and think about how many reflections would it take. And then I'm going to show you. All right, so I'm going to open up Sketchpad here. And here we have that first P. And what we're going to do is try to make it look like that second P down there. So we have one line of reflection that's here. If I were to take P and reflect it over that line, I would get this first reflection. Then if I took that P, and I reflected it over this second line, I would get this second 
reflection. And can you see how this uh, this second P that we've just created, or that third P that we've just created, is really the same as we had in the diagram previously? So it took two reflections to create this um, translation, or excuse me, this transformation. So let's go back to the notes here, and let's summarize some of what we're seeing. What do you notice about this first P and this second P? Well, the second P just kind of looks like it's it's laying down a little bit. Um, and one thing that's important to, to realize here is the orientation, right? If the orientation of the two figures is the same, then you could map one onto the other with exactly two reflections. And we saw how we did that, right? We reflected the first P in one line and then made another reflection line and reflected it onto the same. But that's because the orientation is exactly the same. In this case, maybe both of them are clockwise. However, if the orientation were reversed, you may need up to three different reflections to create um, the transformation. All right, now let's look at a composition of three reflections. So again, this isn't something that you need to write down, but follow along with the um, demonstration here and try to think about what's happening when we have three different reflections. All right, so let's take a look at my puppy here. What we're going to do is create three reflections of this puppy. So here's my puppy. He's facing to the right. If I look at my first reflection, there he is. Now he's facing the other direction. The orientation has reversed. Okay. So now we'll create our second reflection. And if we flip him upside down, now my orientation is the same as it was originally. Now we're going to create yet a third reflection. So we're taking this puppy right here, reflecting him over this line right here, and we've created our three reflections. Now what actually ends up happening, I'm going to turn these first two reflections off, is this is what we call a glide reflection. So if I were to have translated that same puppy down, so just moved him, slid him down here, we could have created this puppy that we see here by simply reflecting it over this line that I've just drawn, right? So we we um, translated it and then reflected it, and you can kind of see he's on top of the the other one there. So a translation and a reflection together create a guide reflection. A guide reflection can also be created by combining one, two, three different reflections. All right, so now let's take this back to our notes. A composition of reflections actually results in a glide reflection. So let's talk about glide reflections. A glide reflection is a composition of a translation and a reflection. So let's look at an example in the coordinate plane. Let's say we wanted to create a guide reflection of this triangle. Well, the first thing I would do is I would take that triangle and I would just translate it. So maybe we're going to move it, I don't know, this many units. So that looks like seven units to the right. But then if I wanted to create a guide reflection, we actually have to flip this guy. And it doesn't matter which direction we flip it, but maybe we flip it upside down. And that would end up in a glide reflection. So we've moved it seven units to the right, and then, whoops, it should be up one more, and then flipped it over the x-axis. You know what I'm going to do? Let's see here. Um, I'll put that original one back in here without the flip, because I think it helps to see it. So first we move it seven units to the right, and then in this case, I reflected it over the x-axis. So let's take this guy and make him a little see-through so we can tell. He's just an intermediate step. But the two figures that we started with, EXT and then E double prime, X double prime, and T double prime are the actual whole figure together. So that's a glide reflection. All right, so this is the last little part in the notes today, the isometry theorem. And the isometry theorem says that there's actually four isometries.
and these are the isometries that you can create based off of our transformations. The first one is a reflection. So if all you do is reflect a figure, it's an isometry. The size and shape stay the same. A translation is an isometry. A rotation is an isometry, but also a glide reflection is an isometry. And that should make sense because a glide reflection is combining two transformations that are also isometries. So of course it makes sense that when you combine two isometries together, it stays an isometry. In other words, if we combine two transformations together that maintain the size and shape, um, combining those together is going to allow us to still maintain the size and shape of my figure.